Good morning. Well, this morning I woke up and um, I don't know, I was kind of stirred up, stirred up about some things. Now, I'm just going to talk from my heart this morning because I don't know how else to do it. But um, <clears throat> I was led to read Matthew 12. And there's lots in Matthew 12, but the thing that stood out to me in Matthew 12 was verse 37. And Jesus is speaking here in the little bit of subtitle above verses 33 and 37 in my Bible say, um, it's talking about speaking against the Son of Man and it will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man brings out his evil, sorry, the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. And the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for in it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Lately in my life, I've had a, I have to say, probably a big transformation take place in my life in the last few years. And it has been regarding um, how I talk how I think and how I process those thoughts and then what I allow to come out of my mouth. Now I know a lot of people may think that our words are not powerful, but I feel this is for someone this morning that possibly someone or maybe more than just one person, you've been um, encountering some circumstances, some situations that leave you bewildered, that leave you feeling hopeless, beaten down, um, going around the mountain and I'm here to tell you this morning that it's not just about um, doing what the Bible says, you know, like in, in, in respects of, well, I am, a, you know, if you're saying to yourself, I am a good Christian, I go to church, I read my Bible, I watch teaching. It's about walking out what the Word says for your life. You can't just say you're um, a Christian or you can't just go to church and then not um allow that word to kind of be fruit in your life so that whatever is taking fruit in your life, you're going to allow it to, to be spoken out of your heart. Amen? I don't know, I don't know if that made sense. But what I'm trying to say is that words reveal character. Our words reveal our character. Jesus himself said, for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Now I understand that, that whole little bit I just read is packed with revelation, I'm sure. There, there could be few, uh, quite a few things preached out of that um, two, four, five verses of Scripture. But I want to draw attention to verse 37, because this is what has been made very real to me in my life, and has been, um, for the most part, I have seen the manifestation of the positive lifestyle of sp speaking words um, what God says in his word and it was a process it was a journey as I spoke them as I as I believed in, in the process of believing because you have to believe what you're saying because if you don't believe what you're saying then you're just um, a body with hot air and shooting out words that mean nothing to you so you know with that you have to uh, study the word study the scriptures that you're pre that are pertaining to your circumstance your your situation Listen to me, the word works, and it's not a formula. You know, you can call me a name it, claim it. I don't care what anybody says. I know the word of God is working in my life. And, um, you know, in regards to uh, healing, because there are a lot of sick people in the body of Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> I am a walking testimony. I will shout it till the cows come home if they're... I don't know what that saying means, but anyway, I will shout it till the cows come home because God's word heals. God's word does not lie. He is not a man that he would, he would lie to us, to his children, but everything that he says pertains to us 
pertains to life, godliness, blessing, prosperity of our hearts, prosperity of our lives, our bodies. And I'm telling you, if you're going through anything this morning, I don't care what it is, you find scripture. Like, you know, don't blame God. Don't, don't accuse people when they try to encourage you. And, and don't get mad at the world when things aren't working for you if you're not in the Word. If you're not studying the word and dissecting it and applying the word to your life, do not blame other people. Do not blame whatever. You know, you've got to take responsibility and pull up your, your, your little girl pants and, and say, okay, now I'm going to be a big girl and I'm going to do it all myself or a, a big boy. That's what it's all about. Maturity. Glory to God. So words reveal character. This is kind of what I got this morning. Now, normally I like to spend a little time, you know, kind of putting things together. So just bear with me. But I'm going to go through this because, and I've, I've kind of shared on this before in the past in some of my, my teachings. But I felt very strong this morning that somebody needs to hear this. And if you get a hold of it, you get a hold of it, let me tell you, it will change your life. So a tree is known by its fruit. That's that's what Jesus was saying. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. Tree is good, fruit is good. Tree is bad, fruit is bad. How hard can that be, right? And what's he referring to? Our hearts, hallelujah. The mouth speaks out of that what fills the heart. So think about that one for a minute. The mouth speaks out of that what fills the heart. What are you filling your heart with this morning? Are you filling your heart with negativity, defeat, hopelessness? Are you, are you filling your heart with people who fellowship with you and are telling you that um, you'll never be healed or go see this doctor, go see that doctor or take this medicine or take that medicine? Now don't jump to conclusions. I'm not telling anybody to stop their meds or go, not to go to a doctor. I go to a doctor. But let me tell you, if God's word says that you are healed, then you are healed. And that's all you need to know. That's the final say in your life, in your, in your circumstance. If God's word says that he will feed you and look after you, then that's the final say in your life. That's what you've got to stand on. You can't be tossed to and fro. You can't just one day confess the word and then the next day you're whining and crying out to God. That is immaturity. And I understand that. There's a process because I, I've been there. And I'm just speaking out of my heart today to encourage. Go to Proverbs if you're following me. If you don't want to follow in your word, that's entirely up to you. I'll read it to you anyway. Um, I'm getting so that I'm not going to apologize for the word of God because the word of God is life. It is life to those who want it. It is life. It is joy, it is blessing, it is prosperity, it is everything you need to pertain to life and godliness. It is everything you need to a life that is successful. Amen? Okay, Proverbs 15, 4 says, um, A soothing tongue is a tree of life. Well, listen to me, a tree of life. We are the trees that are planted by the water of the Lord. And we will allow our roots to be nurtured, to be flourishing, however uh, you want it to be. So a tree is known by its fruit. And it says a soothing tongue is a tree of life. Is your tongue soothing to your tree? Is your tongue soothing to someone else's tree? I know that might sound silly, but think about it. If you are speaking words of life, if you are speaking words of blessing over your own body, over your own circumstance, it will develop into a tree of life. Not death, life. Hallelujah. Okay, a good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. What's in your treasure? Is it good things? Are you filling your treasure? Where is the treasure? It's in the heart. So are you filling the treasure of your heart with God's word, with good teaching, with positive teaching? Or are you mully-grubbing in your circumstances? And I'm not, listen to me, those who know me know what I have walked through with my health and with circumstances. I don't know who I was talking to the other day, but I said to them the other day from the, oh, it was my friend I had lunch with. From the other day, or sorry, 
From the beginning of my life, 1979, I have had trials and tribulations. I have had sorrows. I have had sufferings. But you know what? I grew out of those sufferings. I grew out of those trials. And I am today a living example of God's Word working in me, that He is my joy. He is my peace. Do I still get down? Do I still get dis discouraged? Of course I do. Does sickness try to come on me? Of course it does. But do I allow it? No, I don't. Why? Because the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my high tower. And that is something that we have to develop in our lives. And if we don't develop it, if we don't walk it out, if we don't encourage ourselves to get into that secret place, that hiding place, we will never know him as our Abba Daddy. We will only know him as a God up in heaven that maybe is good to us and maybe isn't. It is relational. It is a relational walk with him, and that's what he is encouraging his body to do. Okay, a good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. Evil men bring out of, his, out of their evil treasure what is evil. So it's what you're filling your heart with. Think about that. God's word doesn't lie. You know, I really just preach the word. I have nothing else to say but the word. I, I'm not really a... Um, articulate type of a person. Whatever God gives me, I speak it out. So people can call me what they want, accuse me what they want. But if you're if you're living for God and you're professing to be a Christian and you're professing to live by the Word of God, then don't knock me down because I speak the Word. God's Word says that a good man brings out of the good treasure of his heart that what is good. So what is in our hearts today? That's what we've got to dis we've got to uh, come to the conclusion. Are we filling our hearts with gossip and slander and evil things? Are we filling our hearts with um, judgment and and negativity and self hatred and self um, absorp absorption uh, of things of this life? What are we filling our hearts with? Because whatever you're filling your heart with, it will come out. Okay, by your words you will be justified. Wow and by your words you will be condemned. This scripture alone is says it all. Okay, by your words you will be justified, by your words you will be condemned. I'm going to break it down for you. The word, words in the Greek, means something said. It means speech, including a thought or a reasoning. Wow, so how plain can that get? So by your thoughts, or by what you said, you will be justified. Or by your thoughts or by what you said, you will be condemned. Which is it today? What are you going to choose? The prime root for the word, words, in the Greek means to lay forth. To lay forth. That is to relate in words usually of systematic or set discourse. Okay, think about that. So, if every day you wake up and you say, I hate my life. I hate my circumstance. I hate the situation I'm in. I hate this. I don't like that. I don't like who I am. I look in the mirror and I say, why were you even born? Listen to me. If that is a systematic way of speaking for you, if you have laid out those words on a daily basis, then guess what? kind of fruit you're going to produce. You're going to produce exactly what you say you get. God wasn't messing around. He said in the beginning that he spoke and, and the worlds came into existence. So how much more powerful has he given that to us? We are made in his likeness. We are made in his image. He is the pattern son and we are to follow him. We are to be like him. Amen. Okay. The word justified, by your words you will be justified, by your thoughts, by what you say, by your reasonings, the things that you reason here, casting down every vain imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of God. This word right here, see this word? If it says that you are blessed and you are healed, then you don't let nothing go above that. That is the final say. So, okay. Uh, justified means to show regard as. It means to be free, equitted in character or act. So, by your words or by your thoughts or your reasonings, um, you will be free. So, if you're speaking words of life, you will be free. Glory to God. 
or you will be condemned, which means to be pronounced guilty, to give judgment, to give evidence or proof of a thing. Our words will either condemn us or they will either give us life. God has given us that free choice, and today I'm encouraging you to choose life. We're going to go, I want to read some scripture because I don't want you to think that, that, that this is just something I've conjured up. Okay, Proverbs 13.3 says, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. Think about that. You guard your lips, you guard what comes out, you're going to have life. If you open wide your lips and don't think before you speak, then you're going to produce and create something, whatever it is, that you are speaking. You think I'm nuts? Well, just maybe take a look at your life and you'll see and analyze. I had to do that. Listen, I woke up every day when something went wrong in my life. And this is no word of exaggeration. You can ask my husband when he first married me. Everything I said that came out of my mouth was, I wish I was dead. Especially if, it, if things didn't go right or which really, really, in, when I think about it back then, there wasn't a whole lot that was really good at that time in my life. But that was because I allowed certain things to happen. It was like a, um, a, a recourse of events started transpiring because of the way I, I uh, just like what it says, a systematic or a, a set of discourse. You know, I set up a pattern in my life with words that I spoke. Do our words coming from our heart testify of the works, of the life, of the nature, of the character of Christ? Because if you're born again and you know Jesus as your Savior, you should be living a life in the pattern of what the Son has um, done and what he did. Amen? Or do we deny him? Do our words deny him? An all too familiar scripture quotes it pretty accurate. And I have preached on this many times. Just ignore that. That's my iPad. Uh, Proverbs 18. 18.21. 18.21. And we should all know this. With the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Um, that God made this a reality to me years ago when I was sick with Crohn's disease. He brought to my understanding that life and death were in the power of my word, it were in the power of my tongue. And when this became a revelation, and yes, the word has to be a revelation to you, and you have to press in until you get it. You have to be hungry for truth. And when this was made a reality to me, when he gave me this scripture, it changed my life. Did it happen overnight? No, it didn't. But it changed the recourse of my life. With the fruit of man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the product of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow. So, with the fruit of man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. The Lord showed me that. Uh, if anyone knows what Crohn's disease is, it's a, it's of the digestive system, the small intestine, and it and it really is your it is your good cells uh, rejecting who you are, which is rooted in self rejection. For anyone out there who uh, needs to hear that, any bowel problem, any di digestive problem, is rooted in self uh, self rejection. So God started taking me on a journey. He started dealing with some issues and he showed me that my stomach would be satisfied with the fruit of my mouth so i started on a journey and it was hard i didn't get there overnight where i started confessing health over my life i started uh confessing scripture i am fearfully and wonderfully made and this is a whole nother subject so i'm not going to labor here but what i want to focus on is death and life are in the power of the tongue listen again looking at fruit there is fruit in life, there is fruit in death. Just like uh, out of the evil heart, fruit will come. Out of the good heart, fruit will come. So death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So there's fruit in death, there's fruit in life. 
Jesus came to give us life. And there are two realms here. Oh, listen to me, people. There are two realms in this life. We either choose life or we choose death. And there is nobody greater in your life that can help you to choose than God. The devil is not any greater than God. Jesus is bigger than God, and you have the power to choose which you're going to serve. You're going to serve death, which is the realm of Satan, or you're going to serve life, which is the realm of God, which he came with his life to give to each and every one of us. Amen? Jesus came to give us life, not death. He, he lives in resurrection power, and he's given us those, those places uh, those, we are seated, sorry, in high heavenly places, in the realm and the sphere of authority with him. Resurrection life, glory to God. Again, I have not been, you know, I, I didn't really study this this morning. So if I'm fumbling over some things, please forgive me. Um, so as he, as he is in this world, so are we. He says that. I believe it's in First or Second John. Don't quote me on that. But I, like I said, I didn't look up a bunch of scriptures. Death and life are where? Where is death and life? In verse 21. In the power. What does the power mean? It speaks of to have affection for. Isn't that interesting? It's not dunamis power. It's not exousius power. But it's in, it means um, to have affection for. Or it means open hand which speaks of direction. So think about that. Death and life, the realm of death, the realm of life, are in the direction or in what you have affection for, what you, what you surround yourself with, what you find comfort in. Many people find comfort in self-pity and, and in the misery of their suffering. They play the victim role. Glory to God. Listen, we are overcomers. We are more than overcomers. Hallelujah. So, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They're in the direction or in the thing that you have affection for in the tongue. What you speak. Are you speaking life? Are you speaking self-pity? Are you speaking misery? Woe is me. We've all been there. I'm not making light of it. I'm not making fun of anybody because I've been there. I know what self-pity is. But I don't give into it anymore. Hallelujah. So in other words, we direct our tongues. What does James say? Let's look at that. What does James say? The tongue is a tool. It is a vessel that we direct in either two categories, death and life, death or life. The good tree is known by the, by the fruit of what comes out of the heart, what you speak, and the evil tree is the same. But let's look at James. I think I might be getting ahead of myself, but... Um, that's okay. Uh, James 3. Uh, whichever you have affection for, many enjoy living in death realm, pity parties. Woe is me. If only. Why me? We can all relate to those uh, emotions. Instead of what life produces. I'm an overcomer. Jesus has already done it. The greater one lives in me. That's the attitude we need to, to have. Even in the midst of our circumstance. We'll get to James in a minute. Even in the midst of our circumstances. There's been times where I have been so beaten down. So engulfed in my misery and my circumstance of, of uh, not good health. And all sorts. I could go on. But I took the word of God. I took it, and I marched around my house with it. I didn't care what it looked like, what I felt. I did it anyway, and God saw that, and eventually it became reality to me. Eventually, not that it was a formula, but it, it is a way of life, and that is the thing. You know, many people think that the faith message or the, the, the walking in faith is a movement or it's um, a formula or, or it's a doctrine. No, Jesus himself said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. What is faith? Believing in the things that you do not see. Some of you know the scriptures. I don't have to quote them because I'm talking off the top of my head. Okay, James. Um, I wrote James down here, but I don't know where I wrote it. Uh, it's chapter, here it is, chapter 1. James chapter 1, sorry, 3. 
Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. Okay, let's stop for a minute. None of us, you know, we stumble every day in our tongue. I'm not saying that I have arrived or I'm perfect, but I'm very, very careful what I speak over my body, what I speak over my circumstances, and yes, I have fallen. Yes, I have stumbled. So I'm not sitting here saying that I have arrived. I'm encouraging you, if you are living in that realm, to rise up out of it. it. It gets easier. Trust me, it does get easier. Now, if we put the, uh, for we stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. Now, if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct the entire body as well. So think about that. Look at the ships also. Though they are so great and are driven by strong winds, are still directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. So also is a small, so also the tongue is a small part of the body, yet and yet it boasts of great things. So think about that. It's saying that if, if the tongue is such a small um, part of, of our lives, we can direct our lives by what we speak. Do you believe that? It's the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Um, this is, the, this is the, the truth of God. I mean, I can't change that. I'm just telling you what the Word says, and I'm only touching on a few things. But I believe that somebody this morning needs to hear this. If you can, if you can receive this Word and apply it to your lives, you will see change. Because you are setting your path this morning, whether death or life. Again, Matthew 12, 23, what I just read to you. Um, let me just get back there. For by your words you will be justified, by your words you will be condemned. Your words will snare you. Your words will snare you. Again, do you, you believe me that this is what the word says? Your words will snare you. Proverbs 6. Pro write these down and study them yourself. Proverbs 6. Like I said, this is only just off the top of my head this morning. Proverbs, what did I say? Oh, sorry, 6.2, not 12. Proverbs 6.2 says, If you have been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth. Okay, the other version says that your words will snare you. Um, your words, well, you have been snared with the words of your mouth. So to be entrapped by your words is, is not a good place to be because that gives an open door to the enemy to just wreak more havoc in your life. Um, Proverbs 12, 18. I'm just going to read these. Proverbs 12, 18. Write them down. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. You can bring healing to your own circumstance, to your own life, to your own body. Proverbs 16, 4, 24, 16, 24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. You got arthritis? Are you suffering with joint pain? Oh my gosh, sweet to the soul, pleasant words are a honeycomb. There are no greater words, there are no pleasant words more than the word of God that can be <clears throat> sweetness to your bones and healing to your bones, amen? Proverbs 13.3 The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who opens wide his lips comes to ruins. I believe we read that already. Proverbs 21.23 He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. Wow. You know why? Because when your words will allow you to hurt your soul, your words will allow to hurt other people's soul, will bring them into wounds. I, there's scriptures talking about words are like arrows. And, they, and you know, what about weapon? Any, any um, how's it go? Any weapon formed against you will not prosper. Every word that is risen against you in judgment, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know if I'm quoting it exactly, but um, you can look that one up. Words can be very powerful in our lives. Psalm 19 Psalm 19, 19 verse 14 says, 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That's a prayer David had, and that, that's a prayer that we can have. I'm, I'm not going to labor in this. I, you know, I'll give you uh, Proverbs 17:27. Look that up. Colossians 4:6, Psalm 141:3, and then end with James. I'll end with James 1. James 1:22. Uh, 22, oh, sorry, James 22, where am I? Yes. But prove yourselves doers of the word, not merely hearers, who delude themselves or deceive themselves. You know how many Christians, how many saints, uh, deceive themselves by just going to church, warming their church pews, listening to teaching, but looking in the mirror and walking away never changed. You know, Christianity is all about change, and it hurts. Change hurts. Uh, God disciplines us. He chastens those he loves. And if we can't be exhorted or reproved or, or, or whatever, then, you know, the Bible says we're bastards. That's what the scripture says. We're bastards if we're not sons of God. And a son will take correction. And the word corrects us. And it's not what I'm saying. It's what the word says. You want your life to change then do what the word says. Be not just hearers, but be doers. Faith without works is dead. Amen? Glory to God. Well, I know this was for somebody. I don't know who, and that's okay. But I, I pray to God that this, you will meditate on this. You take some of the scriptures, and I've only touched, I've only touched the surface of it. But um, really just meditate on those scriptures and let it change your life. You know, I thought also of an analogy while I was um, up this morning, how powerful words are. And, and I had to think along the terms of makeup because I'm a woman and I like makeup. But have you ever noticed when you buy certain products, let's take mascara because, you know, I don't know why I thought of this. Maybe the Holy Spirit quickened it to me. But you look at packaging for mascara and it will say voluminous lashes. Big and explosive lashes. You want big and explosive lashes? Use this product. Well, why do we buy that product? Because the words, the descriptive words, tell us that we're going to get something. You know? And so, again, we are moved by words. And it may work and it may not work. But the Word of God always works. The Word of God does not lie. So when the Word of God tells you that you are healed, that you are delivered, you are set free, you are blessed, you are an overcomer, then you believe it. God has the final say in your lives. I want you all to have a blessed and a prosperous day. I hope this word encouraged you. Uh, drop me a line if it did. If it didn't, let me hear your opinion. I don't really matter what our opinions are because the Word of God is truth. And that is the final say and should be the final say in all our lives. Have a blessed day and God bless you.